My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing an inspection of piping using the checklist from Appendix B of IIAR Standard 6. The checklists contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklist, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems, and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. The simplest part of completing the piping checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner. Pipes are not typically given unique ID or tag numbers, so NA is often indicated here. If a pipe does have an ID or tag number, it would most likely be found on the PNID. Unlike most other inspection checklists, after completing the contact information section, the piping checklist jumps right into the inspection questions. The piping checklist has a total of 19 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. The wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable to the piping being inspected and should be answered NA. Item A asks if all components are suitable for ammonia. IIAR Standard 2, which is the standard for design of safe closed circuit ammonia refrigeration systems, specifies that all piping materials shall comply with ASME B31.5. Pipe markings, mill reports, and piping diagrams are typical ways that facilities document the suitability of the pipe materials. Item B requires the inspector to verify that pipe fasteners are tight and adequately supported. Appendix F in the 2021 edition of Standard 2 has a table with recommended spacing of pipe supports based on the pipe diameter. Additionally, the 2019 edition of the IIAR Refrigeration Piping Handbook suggests that pipes be fastened to every two or three supports. U-bolts and strut clamps are commonly used fasteners. There is moderate external corrosion on this roof mounted pipe support that should be marked as a follow-up action item. Safe access to all the refrigeration piping can sometimes be limited, so it is important that facilities have stairs, ladders, or aerial lifts to access piping which can be hard to reach. Special caution should be taken when inspecting piping on the roof of a facility. The inspector must pay very close attention to roof edges, skylights, and other hazards when on a roof. Checklist items D, E, and F inquire about leaks and other piping abnormalities. The inspector must do a visual inspection of the entire piping network to verify the equipment is free from vibration and leaks. Item D directs the inspector to check for ice buildup, which is possible to see on the low side of a system. There is some ice buildup on the pipes underneath this recirculator, which should be recorded. Item F asks specifically about leaks. Many pipes are located outdoors, making it more difficult to detect a leak. Item G asks if the piping is adequately protected against traffic hazards. It is not uncommon for ammonia piping bridges to extend throughout the facility and can be located in heavily trafficked areas, which service trucks, forklifts, or semi-trailers could come into contact with live ammonia piping. Therefore, it is important that all piping is adequately protected against traffic hazards. Item H inquires if the pipes are marked as required by IIAR Standard 2. Standard 2 requires piping mains, headers, and branches to be labeled with the following. The word ammonia should be printed in black letters. 
the physical state abbreviation LIQ or VAP, the relative pressure, high or low, an arrow depicting the direction of flow in the pipe, a service abbreviation indicating the purpose of the pipe. Items I and J pertain to the valves associated with the process. All valves should be visually inspected. Deficiencies that should be recorded include corroded or painted stems, missing hand wheels, damaged seal caps, or excessive valve body corrosion. Item K asks if the piping is arranged so liquid ammonia cannot be trapped between the pump discharge check valve and shutoff valve. This question is specific to systems that utilize a recirculator. In this case, a factory set relief regulator is installed between the pump check valve and isolation valve, so the configuration is compliant. Item L asks if all the ammonia drain valves are fitted with plugs. It is imperative that all valves connecting the ammonia refrigeration system to the atmosphere be capped, plugged, blanked, or locked closed when they are not in use. Items M and N ask if gauge valves and gauges have been installed at all control valves and whether all of the pressure and temperature gauges are in good working order. Roof mounted gauges can be damaged by the sun, rendering it difficult to decipher the gauge reading. Item O asks if the installation conforms to the addition of IIAR standard 2 when the piping system was installed. Navigating the differences between editions of standard 2 requires historical knowledge of codes and standards, so it is important that the inspector is qualified in this manner. When a pipe is insulated, the insulation system must be inspected per item P. Deficiencies such as jacket damage, breached vapor barrier, and ice buildup must be noted. This pipe is not insulated, so NA and not insulated should be checked. This pipe insulation appears sound, so yes can be checked. A thermal imaging camera can be helpful to identify insulation system failures that cannot be observed with the naked eye. Item Q asks if the pipe insulation support saddles are in place. Saddles are typically constructed of aluminum or galvanized steel and protect the insulation jacket from being damaged by the pipe support. The inspection checklist concludes with items R and S. Item R requires the entire surface of the piping to be inspected and any surface corrosion or pitting must be recorded as a deficiency. If a deficiency is noted, an additional check mark is required to indicate if the damage is slight or extensive. This suction isolation valve has slight external corrosion. While not specifically listed in the checklist, ultrasonic thickness testing can be used to gauge the amount of material that has been lost due to corrosion. Thickness readings can be used to determine if the pipe is fit for service and the remaining useful life. Item S serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area below can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. This concludes the IIAR6 Appendix B Annual Inspection Checklist for Piping. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.